So let's look at a bit more uh, advanced configurations here and just make sure that we uh, aren't getting overbilled because we spun up resources we didn't realize were going to cost us money. So um, the preset configuration here is on the low cost here. So it's going to be uh, essentially free um, um, if we were to launch this here, which is great for learning. But let's talk about if we actually set it to high availability. So if we set it to high availability, uh, we're going to get a load balancer. So a load balancer uh, generally costs at least $15 USD per month. Um, so uh, by having it low cost, we're saving that money there. And when we set it to high availability, it's going to set it in an auto scaling group, okay, uh, between one to four instances with low cost, it will only run a single server, you can see that it's set to a T2 micro, which is the free tier, and we could uh, adjust that there if we want. Um, and then we have um, updates. So the deployment method right now is all at once. Um, and so if we were to deploy our application again, so let's say it's already been uploaded and we deploy it again using all at once, we're going to have downtime because it's going to take that server off um, offline and then put a new server up with the code in, in order to uh, deploy that code. Um, and so we can actually use blue green deployment um, to mitigate that. Um, and I'm just going to uh, pop in here to show you. So all at once uh, means that it's going to, um, it's going to, uh, shut down and start up a new server in place. Uh, and then immutable means it's going to create a, a, a new um, server in isolation, okay? So just be aware of those options there, but um, there's that. And uh, we can also uh, create our database and attach it here as well. Sometimes uh, that is a great idea because if you um, create an RDS database, so here I could select like MySQL or Postgres, right? and you provide the username and password. But the advantage of creating your R RDS database with Elastic Beanstalk is that it's going to automatically rotate your um, RDS passwords for you for, uh, for security purposes. So that's uh, a very good uh, thing to have here. I generally do not like creating my RDS instances uh, with Elastic Beanstalk. I create them uh, separately and hook them up to my application. But just be aware that you can go ahead and do that. Uh, and I think that's like the most important options there, but we're just going to make sure that we are set to the low cost free tier here uh, with T2 micro. Okay. Um, and we'll go ahead and create our app and here we go. And so now what we're going to see is um, some information here as it creates our application. Um, and this does take a, a few minutes here. Anytime you launch an EC2, cause it has to launch an EC2 instance, but it always takes about you know, three to five minutes to spin up a, a fresh instance. So I will probably clip this video. So um, this proceeds a lot quicker here. So that deploy uh, finished there and it redirected me to um, this, this uh, dashboard here. So if you are still on that old screen and you need to get to the same place as me, just go up to Express.js sample up here and just click into your environment and we will be in the same place. So did this work? So it created us a URL here and we will view it. And there you go. Our application is running on Elastic Beanstalk. All right. Now, if you're looking up here and saying, well, what if I wanted to get uh, my custom domain here? That's where Route 53 would come into play. So in Route 53, you would point it um, to your Elastic IP, uh, which is the case here because we created a single instance to be cost saving and it, it attached an Elastic IP for us. If we had done the high availability option, which created the load balancer, we would be pointing Route 53 to that load balancer. And that's how we get our custom domain on uh, Elastic Beanstalk. And let's just quickly look at what it was doing as it was uh, creating here. So if we go to events, we're going to get all the same information um, as we were in that prior, you know, that black terminal screen where it was showing us progress. It's the exact same information here. So it created an environment for us. It um, had environment data that it uploaded to S3. It created a security group. It created an Elastic IP. Um, and then it spun up that EC2 instance and it took a uh, three minutes. And this is what I said, it would take between three to five minutes to spin up an EC2 instance. If we had chose to uh, create an RDS instance uh, in our configuration, uh, to create that initial RDS always takes about 10 to 15 minutes because it has to create that, um, uh, that initial backup. Uh, but then from then on, if we did uh, other deploys, it would only take the three to five minutes. Okay, so there you go. That's all we need to really know for Elastic Beanstalk for the Solution Architect Associate.